right. Well, hello. Welcome to the very first DC Today of the month of December. It's Thursday. We are now through December the 1st and a few things to update you regarding the market and a few kind of news events and economic data points I want to go through today. <clears throat> Let me get the market data points out of the way. When you had a kind of rally like you saw yesterday that really wasn't rooted in a ton of fundamental logic, uh, it, it, it's always interesting what will happen on the second day. And to have bounced 750 points yesterday, and it really was 950 because you had been down 200, and then only get back 195 today, that's a reasonably strong sign technically. The S&P was only down uh, nine basis points today, and the NASDAQ was actually up 13 basis points. So you basically more or less had a kind of flat S&P and NASDAQ, and you had a uh, really not that much down Dow after this, this massive move higher. Um, but the biggest thing to kind of give you an indication of the confirmation in financial markets, which is broader than just the stock market, but across financial markets is in the bond market. The 10 year treasury yield today closed at 3.5%, 3.5 down at 19 basis points today. I believe it was down 14 bips yesterday. It is down 72 basis points from the high that we had seen in many, many years of 4.22%. And that was just five weeks ago. So in five weeks, you've gone from four point, let's call it four and a quarter to three and a half. So that's a huge rally in bonds um, in the last five weeks. And again, by rally, I mean the prices of bonds going higher as the yields have gone lower. Um, on the equity side today, the top performing sectors weren't up a ton. Communication services, was uh, up 29 basis points and healthcare was up a quarter of a percent. The worst performing was financials and it was down 0.71%. Uh, uh, oil was up almost 1% up to $81.28 a barrel. Um, okay, so by the way, that point on financials, uh, the new uh, vice chair of the Fed who is the head of supervision uh, Michael Barr came out. I thought it was a utterly bizarre communication that they're in the midst of a study on capital requirements for banks. And he came out and said, and I quote, we haven't finished our study yet, but things seem lower than they ought to be. And I don't know what that means, seem lower than they ought to be. Um, but it suggested that some banks are, that they intend to increase capital requirements. And so you saw some of the bank institutions drop today on this kind of vague, ambiguous, sort of a threat a little bit from, from the Fed. Um, in terms of the economic data I was referring to, the PCE measurement, and by the way, this caused the Dow futures to rally earlier this morning. It didn't end up holding but the Fed's uh, favorite inflation measurement, which is the personal consumption expenditures, came in up just 0.2% for the month. It had been up 0.5% uh, last month. So you see that continued disinflation of the rate of growth dropping month over month. And again, that's even baked in with the realization that the markets know what the data can't yet reveal, which is something I've talked about over and over again that actually that number is already deflating because the fact of the matter is the way that housing markets are reported is not accurate. I'll have some more charts and info in Monday's DC today. Um, initial jobless claims came in at 225,000 for the week. That was lower than had been expected. Um, and then ISM manufacturing came in at a small decline. Again, anytime is below 50, that represents contraction in the manufacturing sector. Anything over 50 represents uh, expansion. And, and even though 49 isn't much contraction, 12 of the 18 sectors were in negative territory. So some slowdown you're seeing there on manufacturing. Um, you know, equities are at a three month high coming into today. The dollar was at a three month low. So this is a theme that I've talked about for a long time. You should get the idea. It's important to realize, I think, about the, the market rally that you're not seeing risk takers just try to price in when the Fed pauses or when the Fed cuts or when the Fed slows down. That's a factor. But then there's also some degree of, of anticipation around the soft landing thesis. Does one believe that um, Fed is about to 
taper and will end up getting out of this without that they will get out of the tightening that they've done without having rocked the economy. And so the market to really be bullish has to bet on two different things. One of two could be bullish. Two of two could be very bullish. Zero of two could be bearish. And so that's where we stand. Um, I'm going to talk more about it on Monday probably, but uh, well, late in the day, in the trading day, uh, maybe it was midday, I did get the pop-up that Austin Goolsby has been named the new president of the Chicago Board of Federal Reserve. Uh, Austin, I've known for some time. He and I have been on TV and radio together, maybe as much as 10 times. I know it's over half a dozen. He was the uh, head of the Council of Economic Advisors under President Obama. I think highly of Austin as a person. He's an articulate, thoughtful guy. I disagree with him on a lot of things, but he'll be joining the Fed Board of Governors subject to approval, of course. Um, the, the Senate, I guess, has now voted to approve uh, the, averting the strike on railroad. I think it, from what I saw is 85-15, something around there. Uh, so kind of expected it should be going to President Biden's desk now shortly. So we will not end up with the Fed, well, excuse me, with a railroad strike. But there's you know been some interesting kind of politicking around it all this week. So tomorrow you'll get the, the jobs number. You'll get um, a dividend cafe on the Fed. I was really hoping to have it written today and and record it going into the Friday, but I'm more than likely going to have to record it on Friday morning, which is what I normally do anyways. Um, but I do have a flight to San Francisco tomorrow, and so I'm going to have to record before I go. Uh, but there's just a few more things I want to kind of tweak with it. But I like the way the piece is coming together, and I hope you'll read Dividend Cafe tomorrow on the Fed. Uh, that's all I have for you today. Reach out anytime. Any questions, we're here to answer every single day in the written thedctoday.com. I'm answering a question, a real question that has come in from a real person, and we don't cover those on the podcast video. But um, you know, if you have a question uh, that you would like to send, send it to questions at thebonsongroup.com. Thank you so much. We'll leave you there. Have a wonderful Thursday night. Mm-hmm.